Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to implement a package called Rate My App. This package allows us to prompt users to rate our app based on certain conditions, such as minimum number of app launches and minimum days installed. Based on the rating a user gives our app, we can create custom actions. For example, if a user rates our app 5 stars, we can prompt them to review our app on the iOS App Store or Google Play Store. If a user decides to rate our app less than 5 stars, we can send them to a contact page so we can find out more about their rating. A lot of developers forget to implement rating prompts within their apps. It's a simple yet very effective way of encouraging users to leave a rating. Positive ratings and reviews are essential to ranking higher in search results and convincing potential users to download our apps. Prompting users to rate our apps will not only help us accumulate more ratings, but it will also indicate what users like and don't like about our apps. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and with that, let's get started. I've opened up a brand new Flutter project, and the first thing we're going to do is add the package Rate My App, version 0.4.0. If you're supporting any iOS versions before 10.3, make sure you add the key LS Application Query Schemes and the string value ITMS in an array to your info.plist file. Another important note is to double check that your info.plist bundle identifier is the same as your app ID on App Store Connect. And package identifier located in build.gradle is the same as your app ID on Google Play. However, if they don't match, you can follow these instructions to use custom identifiers. Inside main.dart, let's remove the default counter app from my homepage. And then we'll add the title text flutter rating prompt to our app bar. We have to create a rate my app object to customize the conditions for when we want a rating prompt to show. Preferences prefix is the string that comes before the string keys in Shared Preferences, a persistent storage plugin for simple data. This is how Rate My App keeps track of when the user launched the app for the first time and the number of times the user has launched the app. We can set the prefix to Rate My App underscore to ensure that the Rate My App Shared Preferences keys don't overwrite any of our own keys if we're storing data through Shared Preferences too. Next, we'll set min days to three. This is the minimum number of days a user must have had the app installed before showing an app rating prompt. Min launches is the minimum number of times the user must launch the app before displaying the rating prompt. We'll set that to seven launches. Then we have the ability to set remind days and remind launches. If the user does not want to rate your app at the time they are prompted, then they will be reminded in another two days and five launches. This is great because if we were to prompt the user again and again on the next launches, they would most likely give you a low rating for continuously asking for a rating. The number of days and launches to wait before asking for a rating is completely up to you. The larger you make these values, the more likely you are to get a high rating because the users you are targeting clearly enjoy using your app. However, the trade-off is that you will not receive as many ratings and reviews as quickly because you're waiting so long to prompt your users. So you have to find the perfect balance based on how often you believe your users will use your app. If you're using custom identifiers, then the two variables you will need to add to the Rate My App constructor are the App Store identifier and Google Play identifier, which we talked about earlier. Now that we've customized our Rate My App object, let's ask for a rating prompt when the screen is loaded. Inside our init state method, we want to call our init on our Rate My App object and get the callback which is void, so we can put an underscore here. Then we check if the dialog should be opened and call the function RateMyApp.ShowStarRateDialog. This will take in the build context, the string title, and string message of our dialog, an on rating change function, a dialog style, and star rating options. Dialog style and star rating options change the appearance of our rating prompt. If we take a look at the file containing these two classes, we can see what values each class takes in and how to modify it to our liking. The onRating change function returns a list of widgets. Here we'll return a flat button with the text OK. And when the user presses the button to confirm their rating, the onPress function will set Rate My App to not open the rating dialog again, save the data to shared preferences, and then use navigator.pop to pop the dialog away. We also have to wrap these two lines in an if statement, checking if stars is not null, in the event a user clicks OK without selecting a star rating and pops the dialog. At this point, 
we can take different actions based on the rating the user gave. If the rating is 3 or less, we can send the user to a Contact Us screen in our app. If the rating is 4 or greater, we can show the user another dialog, asking them if they want to leave a review for the app on the iOS App Store or Google Play Store, and send them to the correct app listing based on their device. Let's test out the app on an iOS emulator and Android emulator. We're going to comment out the if statement RateMyApp.ShouldOpenDialog to make the rating prompt appear. But remember to uncomment it so the rating prompt does not appear on every launch in production. On iOS, we're able to use the rating slider, but not able to hit the submit button because we're in development. If we were in production, we would have the option to tap submit once we select a rating. Now on Android, when we rate the app 3 stars, we see the navigate to contact us screen message in the debug console. And when we rate the app 5 stars, we see the leave a review dialog message in the debug console. And that's all for this video. Remember to leave a like, subscribe, share this video, and star the repository on GitHub. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.